Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Wednesday, August 21st, 2019. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, also keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So uh, just because it's coming through as a message dated for the 21st of August, it does not mean that it has to resonate on that day, right? It can resonate at any time for you. Um, first, uh, I do want to say that um, you might hear construction going on. They just started. They literally, like right before I started recording, um, they started working with the equipment over there. So you might hear it in the background. Hopefully it's not too distracting. Uh, my sinuses are much better today. Um, I am not having any issues so far, of course, though, once I start channeling, we'll see what happens, but we'll see. Um, anyway, I'm not even going to get into that. Um, so I do want to say that the energies are really, really heavy right now. Um, I woke up, I had some really weird dreams. Um, there have been a lot of weird dreams lately, um, but I woke up just feeling pretty depressed um, and just uh, just not happy, <laughs> not feeling it, not really wanting to in get involved, whatnot, whatever. Um, I'm not going to be taking any personal readings right now um, uh, until September. Um, and that was something that I had, I had figured, I had, I had uh, come to, or I had decided on Number one, because next week I'm going to be working on the monthly readings for September, the Zodiac readings for September. Um, but also I had already felt this energy creeping in of just like this low vibrational, just dense, sad, depressed energy. And I didn't want to take any more personal readings. Number one, because I don't feel like I'm, you know, in the right mindset for it. And with that said, I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to do, I have two scheduled today. I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to do them, that it's even wise for me to do them right now just because of how low the energies feel. It just doesn't feel right. Nothing. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Nothing feels right right now. Um, I'm even in a place of trying to figure out how I want to do these divine union, divine partnership readings. And I'm so indecisive about it like so indecisive about it. I don't know, I, I don't know how, I, I mean, I went out, I bought a new Oracle deck yesterday with intentions of, to, of getting started with those readings. And by the time I got back home, I was just, I was just like, no, I cannot do this right now. Like yesterday, I went out, I went out, before I went out, cause I was gonna go out and do like some grocery shopping and pick up this new Oracle deck, you know, for these readings. I meditated for a while, focusing on finding inner peace and just, you know, harmony and just, you know, raising my vibration and, and it worked. And then as soon as I got out in public, I just, it, everything just crashed. And like, I, I didn't want to be around anybody. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want, I just, it was, it was, it's bad. You guys, I have no, I really have no idea what's going on and I'm not an astrologer, so I can't say as to like what the planets are doing, but the energy right now just is really super heavy, super emotional. Um, and that's kind of what's coming through with the pre-shuffle. So I'm not taking any personal readings. I may not, uh, unfortunately, I may not even be able to do the personal readings that I have booked right now. I will be contacting you if you have a reading scheduled. Um, but let's get into these energies here. So um, you may even be able to hear it in my voice. I'm just like not feeling the best right now. But the first card that came out in the pre-shuffle was the Hermit. And now it's this side of the Hermit where it looks like the Hermit is seeking. If it were this side of the Hermit, I would say, okay, the, the Hermit has found his illumination. He's You've done your, your Hermit work or blah, blah, something like that. Here though, it looks like, you know, the Hermit is looking again. I, I, I So I really feel like we're in a place right now where decisions need to be made, two of wands, but those decisions that need to be made are very much in terms of where you are emotionally, where you're standing emotionally. We do have the Queen of Cups here. Normally the Queen of Cups is actually, 
Okay. Normally, the Queen of Cups is depicted as staring right into her cup. In this deck, it doesn't quite look that way. She could either be looking into the cup, or she could she could be looking off in like uh, like just above the cup. But with the the look on her face, it looks like she's deep in thought. Like if you ever like if you were to like get lost in space or something, or you're just spacing out, this is the type of look you would have on your face, right? So. I'm hearing okay. Well, I'm hearing some sort. There's some sort of over analyzing going potentially, but right now, what we need to be focusing on, I guess, what this is saying, what we need to be focusing on is getting our emotions in check, understanding what it is we're feeling, coming to terms with our emotions, coming to terms with our desires potentially, getting a hold on our desires, getting our desires in check, understanding that the more that we desire something, the more we're kind of pushing it away. But it's not to say you should stop focusing on the things that you would like to create it's more about focus on understanding how you might be getting stuck in places that's i think that's where the over analytical nature is coming into play we might be over analyzing what it is we truly desire and what we truly want and that could be blocking the universe from helping us manifest it but it also could be blocking us some of us from making some sort of decision here with the two of wands overall energy is the two of swords it is in reverse though and then on the other side uh is the seven of wands all right and most of these the big okay the big ones that are depicting where we are right now those cards the backs are turned the hermit the seven of wands the two of swords all right so in that that sense or in that case it's giving me an impression of we are searching for something we're looking off into the distance for potentially maybe for some sort of meeting some sort of understanding some sort of direction some sort of guidance i mean i i'm so indecisive right now that i'm getting guidance and yet it doesn't feel right it doesn't feel complete it's not clear and so i'm feeling like i don't I don't want to take action on it. And that's what this Two of Swords is saying. It's like in reverse, it's like we're feeling stuck. There's this stuck energy here that is like, we don't know which way to go. We don't know which way to turn. We don't know what action to take. But what we really need to be doing right now is focusing on getting our emotions in balance, our emotions in check. I guess understanding what it is we are feeling, the hermit, so that we can move in a direction. All right, and yet there's still a message of some sort of over analytical nature. I feel like maybe we're over analyzing things in the sense of, in the sense of, if you need to take a break, if you need to pull back, if you need to dissociate for a little bit, if you need to go into some sort of hermit ho bo mode, by golly, by all means, please do that. And I think that was a specific. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, it was. It, yes, they just said, yes, Eric, it was a specific message for you. Okay, I get it. Knight of Pentacles just showed itself. Um, slow and steady wins the race. There really is no need to rush anything right now. Ace of Swords. Ace of Swords just popped out. All right. Over analytical nature. Okay. All right. So, and then the Ace of Swords was upright. So it's, we know exactly what we need to do right now. Right now is a time for rest and recuperation. I, li I really don't, I mean, we just had a full moon. What was that, on the 18th? Um, which was three days ago now. I don't know what's going on with the planets. I am not an astrologer, all right? I don't know. All I know is... Things pre feel pretty heavy, and to be quite honest, pretty shitty right now. So <laughs> take your time to rest if you need it, all right? So let's get a... Reset shuffle here, and now we're going to get into the rest of the message for today. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. For our Wednesday, 
our hump day, happy hump day, August 21st, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, um, I do just want to say that even though I'm not going to be doing private readings right now, I will still be doing collective readings. That, f that still feels okay, so I'll still definitely be still be doing that. But as far as tuning in specifically to, you know, for private readings, that I'm not really, I'm not in a good headspace for that right now. So unfortunately, we'll, I will handle that. But anyway... Um, I'm going to give this five shuffles, but I'm seeing purple, all right, and purple is divine wisdom. It's, I'm hearing guidance, understanding, um, way, it's, it's almost like way showing is what they're saying. It's like there, there is a, there is a period right now that we are going through energetically. It almost feels like we're going through some sort of gateway, some sort of portal, I don't know, some sort of checkpoint, whatever. However you want to label it, that's two, um, in which it's showing us, I, I just heard it's showing us a way to our higher self. Um, it, we're being shown the way by our higher self. That's three. There's some sort of clarity, some sort of wisdom. And yeah, the, the high priestess, I just caught a glimpse of the high priestess. There's some sort of clarity that's coming, that's for, that's coming into play, coming into fruition. Um, and it feels like it's gonna take a little bit of time for us to integrate it. This is big, this is massive, you guys. This just feels really, really big. Last shuffle here, all right? It's almost, there may be some sort of course correction. The 10 of cups just showed itself. There may be some sort of course correction Look, I want to show you. It's Look, it's right here. The Ten of Cups just showed itself. But when it showed itself, I was seeing it upright. It is now like it looks reversed here. Um, but what I was when I was seeing it, it was showing itself in an upright position to me. Um, and the, the Ten of Cups did come out yesterday. It was this side of the card, and it was reversed. Right now, the Ten of Cups is showing itself, and it's this side. This, to me, is keeping with the dreamer energy or the looking off into the distance energy, the stars, um, guidance, the angels, the higher selves, the universe, the space, you know, all that kind of energy, showing us the way somehow, showing us the way towards some sort of Ten of Cups energy, some, deeper, some sort of deeper sense of emotional fulfillment, perhaps. Um, it, it, literally, I just heard it's showing us how to get there. What is there? Well, there is going to be different for everybody. Okay. All right. Let's see what we've got today, Spirit. What do you want to talk about today? What, what do we need to know today? What's going on with these energies, Spirit? Like, holy moly, what is, what is this? Eyes are closed, so bear with me. That's enough. All right. They, looky here. There it is again. The Ten of Cups. And it's the side that came out yesterday, and it's still reversed. On the other side of the deck, overall energy, is the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands is upright. Okay? So this is a good thing. To me, this is speaking... You see how she's just sitting there in a meditative state, it looks like. All right? Um, holding her place, holding her position. This could be a sense of her holding her vision here, okay? Now, this is feminine energy, all right? Um, okay, this is feminine energy, but we're not just talking to the feminines here. We're not just talking to individuals that are femininely, or, femininely oriented. We're also talking to those who are masculinely oriented. This is a general reading. This is for, this is literally a message for everybody. What is needed right now is to just sit in your receptivity. Sit in it. Go within, all right, with that hermit energy that came out before. Now, there really isn't much action that needs to be taken right now. Why? Because underneath this Ten of Cups here is the world. And the world is in reverse. 
this is that energy that I was feeling of like going through some sort of portal, some sort of change is in the work, some sort of change is happening. There could be an energy in which someone is trying to rush this. You cannot rush this change. You cannot rush this cycle. Completion. You can't rush the completion of this cycle. Whatever this is for whomever I'm channeling for, you cannot rush this. Right? You just have to let it come to completion on its own. What else do we have here? We have the Queen of Swords, the Eight of Cups, the Six of Wands, and the Seven of Pentacles. But the Seven of Pentacles is turning reversed. So I'm going to leave it that way. All right. So uh, this Queen of Swords is giving me even more energy of needing to just dissociate right now. Her back is turned. And I feel like her back is turned because she's needing to deal with some own, some things. She's, she's needing to handle some things, all right? She's needing to let go. Queen of Wands also. She's needing to let go of some things. Eight of Cups. Walking away. Leaving some things behind. Um, and the Eight of Cups. Didn't the Eight of Cups come out yesterday also? And it was this side of the card with the sun and the moon. Okay? Balance. Integration. Integrity. Um, illumination. Understanding. The balance between masculine and feminine. And yet, with all of this, you do have the Six of Wands. This is a good thing. All right, the Six of Wands is talking about a victory here. Now, I, I feel like this is a, whatever the Six of Wands is representing here, it is a hard won battle. I mean, I mean, normally the Six of Wands is a really positive card but in this deck it looks kind of dreary kind of gloomy you know the sun is either rising or setting here take that as it resonates but then look at this side this side doesn't look that much it actually it looks bleaker this side i guess could be a little more positive because there's some some sunlight and yet it still it feels feels very dreary there's some sort of sense of victory here and yet it may have come at a high cost, at a high price. You may have come out on top here, and yet you still might feel like burdened by something. And if that's the case, the advice here is to just... I'm hearing let go, be free, stop worrying about it. I mean, of course, stop worrying about it. All right, that's easier said than done. But it's possible. Seven of Pentacles is literally just saying that something is not ripe for the picking just yet. I'm hearing victory is at hand. I'm hearing you're almost there. And yet something isn't just isn't quite right just yet. It's not just it's not quite ready. Now, OK, spirits taking me back to when I was explaining how I, I'm, I'm very indecisive about things right now because I'm getting guidance. And yet it doesn't feel clear enough for me to take action on it. Seven of Pentacles in reverse. It's not quite ready yet. Not quite ripe enough yet. You see how that was trying? That was just trying to turn upright. So maybe we... Um, I guess for sake of positivity, we can leave it upright. But I don't really even think that's necessary. Let's leave it. Let's keep it. I'm going to call a spade a spade. I'm going to keep it at, as it is right now. It's not quite ready yet. Whatever it is you've been working on, whatever goal you've been working towards, there are still some things that need to be left behind in order for you to really get to whatever it is you're moving towards. Interesting. Queen of Swords. Queen of Swords is really catching my attention here. And I, I, I'm, I'm going to shift. Let's shift. 
Let's shift to the clarification section now. OK, we're going to clarify. I want to start by clarifying this Queen of Swords. Because she's some, this is something specific. It feels like it's something very specific. I'm going to go with the Golden Universal Tarot to clarify that. And then we're going to clarify the rest. But we're going to use the Dreaming Way Tarot for that one. What is this Queen of Swords energy? It doesn't feel bad. And yet, because it's the Queen of Swords, she does have a little bit of a nasty reputation sometimes. It doesn't feel bad. And yet, I'm feeling a little bit of... Ooh, Concern, trepidation, like, ooh, wait, what is this really? It feels like you or whomever it is you're dealing with or, or connecting with or whomever it is I'm, I'm, I'm channeling for right now, you might be in a little bit of a cold state. I am resonating with that right now. Very much so. It's almost, it's, oh yes, it's almost as if your emotions have kind of frozen over. I am very much resonating with that right now. I wonder how many others are. And then juxtapositioned against what the Queen of Cups was talking about. Because that's the, that's the opposite, right? But that would be... I think what the Queen of Cups would represent from the beginning, because remember the Queen of Cups was saying we need to we need to like sit back and really analyze our emotions right now. Figure it out what it is, figure out what it is we're tuning into, I'm hearing, figure out what it is we're feeling, what we're desiring to express, maybe even what we're desiring to create. But that would be the thaw. Right now, we're frozen over. <laughs> All right. One more shuffle, and then I'm going to clarify this a little bit. I just want to, what is this Queen of Swords for us right now? And how do we handle this energy, you know? How do we handle this right now, Spirit? Please help. Please, please help. Queen of Swords. What is this Queen of Swords energy? What is this Queen of Swords energy? Ooh. Well, shit. That is a lot. All right. <laughs> Overall energy is the fool. Whoa. Okay, so I want to start by saying this. And look, the hermit came back out, all right? Okay, so we're on the right track. Well, I want to say this first before I go any further. Um, as I was doing my morning routine, which is some yoga and some meditation before I start filming morning coffee, I was getting into the mode and I was ch starting to channel the energies for the collective, starting to connect with the collective. And I felt a strong urge to do a masculine reading today. I really want to speak to the masculine energies because I feel like the feminine energies have been in a very good place for a while now. And what we really need to start focusing on is healing the masculine energies, both the masculine, the individuals that resonate more with masculine energy and the masculine energy within the individuals that resonate more as feminine. But because of this indecisive energy, I was like, I don't even know if that's the right thing to do. Eventually, I didn't do that. But I was in a mindset of thinking, well, wait a second. What I'm feeling right now, it kind of feels like it's on par, on par with the masculine collective. So maybe I am just in my masculine energy right now. And that I was reminded of that when this all of this came out for some reason. Why? Oh, because of the fool. Because of the fool. Remember yesterday we were talking about masculine energies and how there's some sort of new leap of faith, new direction that someone needs to, either needs to or wants to, or maybe both, needs to and wants to move in. So when the fool came out just now as the overall energy here, that is what reminded me of that. So even though we're, we're, we're talking about the Queen of Swords, and my God, this is a big old stack of cards. Holy shit. <laughs> we're going to get into it, though. Don't worry. Even though we do have the Queen of Swords here, and we had the Queen of Cups before, 
we could still be talking about individuals within the masculine orientation. Why? Well, because the feminine deals with emotion, right? So you could be a masculine energy that is working with integrating your feminine energy, which would be leading you towards healing your inner, your personal inner masculinity. And those of us that are more femininely oriented might be feeling an upheaval within our own masculine energy. Okay. All right, cool. So first card that I want to talk about the hermit. We need, Oh, I'm hearing over analytical nature again. Okay. In terms of the overanalyzing, there is no need to rush this. You need to, right now, what's important is working on just seeing things clearly as they truly are. Not, it, not, not trying to make it into something extreme, not trying to make it into something that it isn't necessarily. And actually, that could be a personal message for me because I have been really overthinking things a lot over the last two days. Like literally, okay, fine, let me, let me put it this way because this is actually, this is what they're saying to me. Me personally, I'm in an over analytical state because I know for a fact that I just need to take a break from personal readings right now. And yet I'm saying to myself, no, you need to honor this. You, you, and I'm, I'm, get, I'm, I'm getting upset, I'm getting mad at myself for needing to take some personal time. And it's like, Eric, you just took personal time last week. It's like, dude, I can't, what? Like, I, I'm not trying to, <laughs> I'm not trying to do this. Like the energies suck right now. And I don't want to, I don't, I, I don't want to channel, I don't want to be channeling for specific personal situations when I'm not in the right state. I, I've come to realize that, that um, collective readings are much, much different. Even though I'm channeling for a lot of people, collective readings are much different. Personal readings take more out of me than collective readings, honestly, which is really weird, but whatever. <laughs> I don't get it, but it's fine. But yes, my over-analytical nature is, is hurting you. Okay, is hurting me. Okay, but there are some things that we need to assess. There is some soul searching that needs to be done right now, all right? Next card is the Page of Wands. Self-discovery. Oh, I'm overanalyzing yourself. Some of you are overanalyzing. Page of Wands, whoo, Justice. Knight of Cups, there we go. Ten of Swords, the Star, Five of Swords, the Tower, Eight of Pentacles, Death, the Ten of Pentacles, the Page of Swords. Good golly. Okay, I can't get this phrase over, anal over analyzing. People are over analyzing something. I, I, yes, it is a message for me, but it's also a message for others. Um, there is a lot being said here. First of all, there are definitely some cycles that are coming to an end. We have three tens. We have the Ten of Cups which is in reverse. Then we have the Ten of Swords and the Ten of Pentacles. We also have Death and the Tower. All right, there is a massive change happening. This is the overanalyzing. Five of Swords, yes. Five of Swords with the Star. This is the overanalyzing. Self-sabotage. I literally feel like we're going through a portal right now. A shift, a change, and that's right here the world okay we're going through a cycle we're going through a, a gateway in which a lot of things from the past are being shed lessons have been learned here work has been done work is being done and that's allowing you to make to go through this transformation that's allowing you to bring down some sort of tower some sort of structure something that has been standing for a long time justice is being served here now, it could be the overanalyzing could be the sense that you've already figured some shit out. You are a much more emotionally open person now than you have been in the past. So let this phase, let this cycle come to an end. Like some, let something happen. 
I'm hearing enjoy yourself. I literally just heard enjoy yourself. Page of Swords. Someone could be watching you or you could be watching someone else. This could also be that over analytical nature. No, something's not quite right. I need to seek more. I need to find more. Nah. Just go with the flow. All right? I'm hearing just let this, whatever change is happening in your life, whatever cycles are coming to a close, just, I'm hearing just let the change happen. Okay? Just let it happen. That's all that Queen of Swords right there. It's good in the sense that something is changing, right? But it's, it's kind of negative in the sense that you're overthinking. There is some sort of overthinking that's happening, okay? And it has to do with your emotions. So maybe instead of trying to understand what all of your emotions mean all the time, maybe just feel through them, okay? So now... Let's talk about this stuff. Eight of Cups, Six of Wands, Seven of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles is in reverse. Um, I do feel like this is the energy of what you're moving away from, Eight of Cups, and what you're moving towards. Victoriously, Six of Wands, but that isn't quite ready yet. It's not quite... ready to harvest. And you might be in an energy, something that might be not helping you at all, but you might be in an energy of just sitting there watching it grow. Like, um, like you're trying to, like you're sitting there watching water boil. You know, it's not going to help you. Last shuffle. And then let's see. I keep hearing over analytical nature. Over analytical nature over analysis is getting you down. Free yourself from fear and allow yourself to rise back up again. That's literally, that was literally what I just heard. It's definitely a message for me, but it's also a message for a, uh, many others out there. All right, cool. Let's get this clarified here. Eight of Cups, Six of Wands, Seven of Pentacles in reverse. What are we moving towards, Spirit? What does this mean? That question alone right there. Stop for a second. That question alone. What does this mean? Stop asking. Stop trying to analyze that. So should I not even be pulling clarity on this? Yes, do it. All right. Interesting. So whatever it is here that you're moving towards is connected to this stuff. Because you see these cards fell out and they fell over here. What is this? Yeah, look, the Page of Wands, the Eight of Pentacles again. Both of those came out here. Over, overall energy. The lovers. Wow. But look, both of those came out here. Eight of Wands. I'm sorry. A, a page of Wands. Eight of Pentacles. You see? Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, hold on. See? So. What does this mean? Well, t actually, what this is saying to me is that um, the work you are doing and the work you've been doing to define yourself, to um, basically your personal growth. Yes? Your, the work you're doing to better yourself, to know yourself, to understand yourself, I'm hearing is paying off. It's definitely paying off. 
It's bringing you into union, divine union. It's bringing you into a union with yourself, but also there's a counterpart involved. You may not know of them yet, If that's what you desire, then that is what is, is happening. Uh, but I'm seeing that with the lovers and the Ten of Cups. The lovers can either mean a partnership or a union with yourself. It also can mean a union with another person, a divine union, a divine partnership. And you see how the angel is between these two individuals right now. It's like the angel is helping bring these two together. I want to pull more. I'm going to leave the lovers here. Yeah, look. And look, underneath the lovers is the tower. All right? So I'm going to pull a little bit more. Let's just see. Just to, to find this Eight of Pentacles and Page of Wands. You can see the Page of Wands as a minor arcana version of the Hermit. Self-discovery. Understanding yourself. Nine of Pentacles. That one. Four of Pentacles. Yeah, okay. Page of Pentacles. And now the Four of Pentacles is falling reversed. It came out kind of sideways. So it can mean two things. One, either you're releasing, letting go of the past. Two, it could mean um, that you are, someone is working on their finances. Someone is working on building a nest egg or saving money. But for, I do want to turn it reversed for the moment because what this could mean with it reversed and with the Nine of Pentacles, all of this stuff here, all that is changing, all that is happening is bringing you to a sense of independence, autonomy, and you're releasing the past. You're kind of just letting go. Four of Pentacles. But this is going to take time. It's not something that's going to happen right away. And with the Page of Pentacles there, you do have a new start. Learning. All right, guys. All right, I'm going to close the reading now with Oracle Guidance from the Crystal Mandala. Just let go, guys. If you need to take a break, just take a break. The, the energies, I'm hearing the energies are really strong, potent, powerful right now. One last shuffle. All right. Closing message, please. Spirit, Oracle Guidance for today. There it is. Yeah, look at that. Ascended Master, Lady Nada, and uh, Rhodochrosite. Sensitivity. Wow. <laughs> okay. There it is right there, guys. Sensitivity. We bring you the blessing of sensitivity. Being sensitive in this world can be tough sometimes, yet your sensitivity is essential if you are to consciously feel and work with subtle energy. Receiving and sending telepathic transmissions, feeling and releasing energetic cords, tingling with exquisite blessings of divine love, sensing the whispers of divine grace, and seeing the luminous sparkling particles of life force dancing wildly and beautifully of shimmering auric fields in, oh, I'm sorry. Um, and the beauty of shimmering auric fields in dazzling and colorful display. To be given the gift of sensitivity to perceive the energetic worlds is, worlds is like being invited to the most spe special and extraordinary exhibit of sacred art. You may have struggled with your sensitivity, found it difficult to bear during times of emotional suffering, yet you have great gift and it will bring you much joy. If you are learning to develop your sensitivity, we will help you so you too can feel uplifted as you witness the energetic beauty of creation. That's really nice. I want to see if there's... Uh, 
Uh, oh. Oh Lord, look at this. Finally, if you have been sensing that something is not quite right, that there is an energy of fear or darkness around you or another, and you are worried that your imagination is working overtime, do not despair. Yes, you are sensitive to light, but also to the presence of darkness. There is no need to fear. How you choose to respond to it is what matters most. Recognizing when you sense something that doesn't feel like unconditional love and choosing to use um, any healing process will protect, empower, and ground you in the loving embrace of the light. There is no need for fear, but there is, no, there, but there is a need for a response. A firm but loving, no thank you, I choose love today, move on please, is more than enough to keep you safely held in love. In this way, you can see that your sensitivity does not make you vulnerable, but rather more aware, and if you respond to what you sense without second-guessing yourself, much more powerful too. Mm. Wow. Okay, I'm going to leave it there, guys. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If you are feeling in these energies, whether it is today, August 21st or not, it is another day entirely, uh, please understand that you are not alone, okay? Um, and please take some time to rest and heal and recuperate. And, you know, if you need to go hermit mode for a little bit, then go hermit mode for a little bit, all right? I love you guys. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.